Hey everyone, it's Ian again for Throwback Thursday for Mondays. Um, hopefully this recording will go a lot better than the last one. Uh, the last one was kind of just rushed together last second. Um, and there were some issues with recording too. Um, one, for example, my microphone only picked up one ear, and I don't know what happened there, so I'll be able to fix it this time, hopefully. Um, and whenever I exported, I exported it as an AVI instead of an MP4, so that the file size ended up being 35 gigabytes, and took about four hours to upload. <laughs> um, so that won't be happening today. What I want to talk about today is, um, do gaming motherboards really matter? Um, I mentioned this in my last video that this was a video that I was planning, and um, I just wanted to put some thoughts together as to why I have the opinion I have. So, if you're building a computer, you need a motherboard, obviously. But everyone always says, like, oh, get a motherboard because it's expensive, or get like the most expensive one you can find because it's going to be the best, and that isn't entirely true. What you should do, at least in my opinion, is get a motherboard that suits your needs. So, for the most part. Um, with my motherboard, it was just basic. It had one PCI um, X16 3.0. It supported my socket, which is LGA1155, because I have an i7-2600. And it has two RAM slots, and I only have one stick of RAM right now. And that's just about it. The cable management for that board is bad because the 24 pin power connector and the RAM are up top when they're usually on the side. So at the time when I built my computer, I thought this wouldn't matter because I had a different power supply. Like my computer was kind of, I guess, ghetto because I used an old power supply that was just kind of cheap and not good and I didn't care about cable management because the wires are already short. Once that power supply started messing up and making my games not work as well as the rest of the computer, I got an EVGA 600B power supply. So I was more concerned about cable management. The cable management on my board now, like I said, isn't good, so my computer looks kind of ugly because it's a modular power supply and like I said, the connections are way off. The uh, south bridge where the chipset is, is on the east. <laughs> Another thing that's important with the motherboard, and it at least impacted my build, is uh, VRM cooling. And this is something that's kind of not really mentioned in, well, it is mentioned, but something that just isn't really talked about as much as it should, in my opinion. Because whenever you look at a motherboard, things that it talks about, like, just main things are, like, its design, or it uses this insane new chipset, or it has 5 million PCI 3.0s, and a million slots for RAM, and 5 million case headers for fans. And that's all good and all. But VRM cooling is something that's important, because if you don't know what VRMs are, they basically supply the voltage for your CPU. And um, there's a Linus Tech Tech's uh, there is a Linus Tech Tips video that explains this uh, better than I probably can. I'll uh, put a link to that in the description. But in a nutshell, it regulates the voltage that is being sent to your CPU. And these tend to get very hot because they're kind of doing a lot of work supplying that voltage. So what happens is if they get so hot, they can throttle your CPU. Meaning if my CPU right now runs 3.4 gigahertz and it throttles, it will go to, let's say, 1.8. That's not like an exact number, I didn't check, it's just an example. Um, that'll last for a few seconds until the temperatures go back to normal and everything will be fine until it happens again. I notice that this is a huge issue with my motherboard because most gaming motherboards, which is what I'm going to get to in a minute, 
have heat sinks on those. Um, if you ever look at a board, I have a picture up. They have like metal blocks and sometimes a metal heat pipe around where your CPU goes. Those are for the VRMs. It's VRM cooling or MOSFET cooling. They prevent that issue from happening. So my board doesn't have any of that. So they're just left to overheat and hurt my computer. Pretty much. Some things I did to prevent this is uh, I bought an extra fan and put it at the top of my case and this really messed up my airflow. But I had it blow down towards the VRMs and this kind of worked. It didn't get rid of all the throttles in general, but it got rid of most. But I just kind of took that fan out because it was just so loud. And uh, <laughs> so yeah, so that's what I'm going to get to now is gaming motherboards tend to have issues like this mostly gone. So VRM cooling, for example, the new board I'm getting is the ASRock Z77 Extreme 4. I know it's an old board, but I have an old socket, so oh well. The board I have now is the uh, Biostar H61MG V3. And I'm getting the new board for a few reasons. One is because they have heat sinks on the VRM, or the MOSFET, so it, it doesn't have that throttling issue, which is great. A few things, or a few other reasons why I want to get it, is it has four RAM slots, or thin slots, because I want to get more RAM for my computer for video editing. It has I like a built-in sound card, which I know I could just get a separate one and put it in mine now, but I just don't want to go through all that. And the one that's on there is supposed to be pretty good on its own, which is good because the one on my motherboard is terrible, which really messes up how I record these videos, because right now I use my HP laptop to just plug in my microphone and use the voice recorder. And then I take that file, put it on my computer. Because my board, there's just, with everything the way it is, it, just none of the jacks work. And it could just be a board issue on its own. Like, not every board is like that. But the thing is, sometimes it works, and sometimes it, like, doesn't. And when it does work, it just sounds terrible. So it's just a really shoddy quality, I guess you could say. And it has um, more things that the ASRock board has, is a uh, non-K overclocking, which is great because I want to overclock my i7 to a higher speed. Right now it's at 3.4 and I'm looking for 4 gigahertz. So in my opinion, like I said, get a board that's based on your needs. So whenever I built my computer, it fitted all my needs. It had a couple fan headers, which were, which was one four pin and one three pin. But then I ended up getting more fans, so I needed more headers, and it didn't have any kind of fan control, so they're all running 100%, and all my fans are loud. Then there's the VRM issues, and then there's the cable management issues. So all these things happen after I bought the board. So now I'm getting another board that fits my needs. So some people might not care about VRM overheating. Maybe they're not playing games on their computer or they're not playing the most demanding games because the way I found out about my motherboard is when I would play Grand Theft Auto V, I can get a solid, a solid 60 frames per second and there would be no frame dip. But then all of a sudden, it'll dip down to like 20, 30 frames per second, even if I'm just standing still. And it was, it'll stay there for about 5 seconds, and it'll just shoot right back up. It's not like anything's crazy going on, and it just slows down. It just cuts from 60 to 20 or 30, and shoots straight back up. And after I put those fans there, the issue did not happen. So this may not be an issue for some people, maybe some people just don't care about frame rates or graphics. I know, sadly I admit, I do. Um, I'm a frame rate hog, you can ask Bill from Throwback Thursday. 
maybe you want more fan headers or something with fan control. It's just whatever board has your needs, go with that board. I know this isn't really the most like in-depth video about this, and I can talk about this for hours and hours and hours. I just wanted to give a basic opinion about what I think about all this, because I could go in-depth and show different boards and show what they can do compared to other ones and review them and just go insane with this, but I just wanted to share a few thoughts. Um, if you thought this video was helpful, then that's awesome. Let me know and leave a like. And if you want to see any more videos like this, just let me know. This is Ian, and I am out. Billy here. And Charlie. And uh, if you liked that video as much as we think you did, comment, like, subscribe. And if you want to watch more, go and click over here. See you again soon.